This hour and change after school, this is the crucial window. This is the time when the state says Hay was killed. School got out at 2.15. People remember seeing her after her last class, heading to her car. According to Jay's story and the cell phone records, she was dead by 2.36 p.m. So sometime in those 21 minutes, between 2.15 and 2.36, she was strangled. So that's obviously the same window Adnan needed to account for. To quote Adnan, my case lived and died in those 21 minutes. So where does Adnan say he was? Well, maybe the library, but nobody testified to that at trial. Then to track practice. He does remember being at track one day when it was snowing, which might have been that day. The coach testified that Anand probably was there, but he can't be 100% sure because, as a rule, he didn't take attendance. After school is when his memories become nonspecific. Usually we did this, or we probably would have done that. Probably track practice would have ended, like I say, 430 Jay did come to pick up Adnan after track. That part Adnan seems to more or less remember. It was Ramadan, so Adnan would have been fasting all day and hungry. It probably would have been close to time for me to break fast. Um, he would have came to pick me up, and we would have went to go get something to eat, and then we would have smoked some weed after, right? And then I would have had to have gone, uh, been home by like around 7, 8 o'clock, right? <laughs> or usually like the last 10 nights of Ramadan, my father would spend the night at the mosque. So a lot of times I would take him food. Uh, like my mother would make food for him, and I would take it, like, usually before 8 o'clock, right? Because that's the last evening prayer. Did you ever leave the campus before the end of track practice? Did you ever... No. Go... Okay. No. You're sure? Uh, I want to say that I'm 99% sure. Okay. The reason why I can't say 100 is because, I mean, and I do kind of understand that it comes across as... I don't know if it does or it doesn't, but it seems like I remember things that are beneficial to me, but things that aren't beneficial to me, I can't remember. It's just that I don't, I don't really know what to say, like, you know, beyond the fact that a lot of the day that I do remember, it, it's bits and pieces that comes from what other people have said, you know, that they remember, right, mm-hmm. and it kind of uh, jogs my memory. Right? Yeah, I don't really know what to say, and I, and, I, and, I, and I completely understand how that comes across. I mean, the only thing I can say is, man, it was just a normal day to me. There was absolutely nothing abnormal about that day to me. Anand knows better than anyone how unhelpful this all is, how problematic, because it plays both ways. If he's innocent, right, it's any other day. Of course he doesn't remember. But you can also read it as, how convenient, he doesn't remember the day. So no one can fact check him or poke holes in his story, because he has no story. I definitely understand that someone could look at this and say, oh man, you know, he must be lying. It's so coincidental that he doesn't remember what he did at this particular time. I mean, I completely understand that. And I get that. That's, you know, like I said, that's the, you know, the biggest, the hardest thing I've dealt with for these past 15 years is that I don't, if, if there's, there's nothing tangible I can do to remember that day. It's the truth. There's nothing I can do, you know, to make me remember. You know, I, I, I poured through the transcripts. I've looked through the um, telephone records. Um, you know, I, I mean, it's just, it, it, what, what else can I do? There's nothing I can do. So it's just, you know, perhaps I'll never be able to explain it. And it is what it is. If someone believes me or not, you know, I have no control over it. Adnan's trial was a long ordeal. Jay was on the stand for something like five days. A cell phone expert testified for two days, a lifetime when you're discussing cell tower technology. There were absences and some bad weather closed the courts. So it was six weeks before both sides rested. But the jury, they moved like lightning. After just a few hours, including a lunch break, they convicted a nun of first-degree murder. Rabia Chowdhury was there in the courtroom when it happened. She says his mother was crying, she was crying. Rabia hadn't sat through the whole trial, so the first time she fully understood that the case came down to those 21 minutes was during closing arguments, when the prosecutor brought out a dummy's head and strangled it in front of the jury. That evening, after the verdict, Rabia went to see Adnan in lockup. And so I went to go see him. So this is the same day he's been convicted. And this is the first time I actually had a conversation with him about, you know, what's going on. And, and I was like, you know, Adnan, the whole thing's turning on these 20, 25 minutes. Like, you know, where were you? And he's like, look, she disappeared in January. You know, in March, you're asking me, like, where were you after school for 20 minutes on a specific day? Like, no, all the days are the same to me, you know. Uh, he's but like, then he mentions that there was this one girl, an alibi girl. Uh, he's like, the only thing um, the, I could offer is, he's like, I remember, he's like, there's a girl I go to school with who, uh, her name's Asia McLean. Um, he's like, right after I got arrested, 
she wrote me um, a couple of letters and she said she also went to see my family and she said she specifically remembers me being um, at the library, at the public library right after school. The Woodlawn Public Library is just across the parking lot from Woodlawn High School. It's not technically part of the campus, but it might as well be. He said, I gave those letters to Christina Gutierrez, to my attorney. He's like, but, you know, apparently it didn't really check out. So he's like, I don't know. So they're not helpful to us. So this is the first time I heard of this girl, um, Asia McLean. I had never heard of her before. Nobody had mentioned her before. Were you, like, floored? Like, wait, 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 what? Let, I mean, what, like... <laughs> I wasn't floored at the time because I thought... I thought if he, if this girl wrote and the attorney, what criminal defense attorney is not going to check out a potential alibi? So I asked him, I said, do you have a copy of those letters? He said, yeah, I have a copy. I said, send me a copy. Adnan sends the letters to Rabia and here's what she reads. The first letter, the first of two, is dated March 1st, 1999. That is one day after Adnan was arrested. At the top of the letter, she notes, I just came from your house an hour ago. Dear Adnan, I hope I spelled it right. I'm not sure if you remember talking to me in the library on January 13th, but I remember chatting with you. She says, quote, we aren't really close friends, but I want you to look into my eyes and tell me of your innocence. If I ever find otherwise, I will hunt you down and whip your ass. Okay, friend? At the bottom, she added a little note. My boyfriend and his best friend remember seeing you there, too. That's letter number one. Then the next day, on March 2nd, she writes it on another letter. This one's typed. It's chattier. She talks about the gossip in school, the bits and pieces of evidence about the crime that are circulating, what the students are saying, what the teachers are saying, about her visit to his house. Quote, your brothers are nice. I don't think I met your mother. I think I met your dad. Does he have a big gray beard? They gave me and Justin soda and cake. There's a whole bunch of people at your house. I didn't know who they were. I also didn't know that Muslims take their shoes off in the house. Thank God they didn't make me take mine off. My stinky feet probably would have knocked everyone out cold. Why haven't you told anyone about talking to me in the library, she asks him. Did you think it was unimportant? You didn't think that I would remember? Or did you just totally forget yourself? Adnan says now that he does, in fact, remember seeing Asia in the library. The thing he remembers about it is so high school. Asia used to go out with Adnan's friend, Justin, and Justin had confided that Asia was a proper young lady. In other words, Justin wasn't getting any. So Adnan remembers thinking he would now get to tease Justin about seeing Asia with her new boyfriend. Maybe the new guy was getting lucky. Ha ha. Anyway, Rabia calls Asia up. It's been a year since she wrote the letters, but she agrees to meet. And she told me uh, that day after school, I went to the public library and Adnan was sitting at a computer checking email or something. And I sat down next to him and we started chatting. And um, Adnan was a very popular boy in school. He's handsome and, you know, popular with the ladies. So she was speaking to him and her boyfriend shows up a little bit later with a friend. And um, she said her boyfriend was really angry at her because he's like, why are you talking to him? You know, as high school kids, you know, why are you talking to him? Is he hitting on you? Um, and she remembered very specifically that that day she went home with her. She went to her boyfriend's house with him. Uh, and they got snowed in, and that snowed really heavily that night. And um, she remembered that for the following two days, school was closed. So she had very specific details about um, why she remembered that day. Asia wrote out an affidavit on the spot. In it, she says she and Anand spoke for about 15 to 20 minutes while she was waiting for her boyfriend to give her a ride. Quote, we left around 2.40, unquote. Remember, Hay is supposed to be dead by 2.36. And then the kicker. No attorney has ever contacted me about January 13th, 1999, and the above information. So, benefit of the doubt for a second. Maybe Adnan never actually showed the letters to Christina Gutierrez, his attorney. Sure, he said he did, but who knows? Well, I know. Deep inside Gutierrez's notes on the case, I have boxes and boxes of such stuff, there's this in her handwriting. Asia plus boyfriend saw him in library, 215 to 315. Then there's another note, dated July 13th. It's more than four months after Adnan's arrest. This is written by one of Gutierrez's law clerks who visited Adnan in jail. Quote, Asia McLean saw him in the library at three. Asia boyfriend saw him too. Library may have cameras. Why, oh why, was this person never heard from at trial? A solid, non-crazy, detail-oriented alibi witness in a case that so sorely needed alibi witnesses. I can't ask Christina Gutierrez because she died in 2004. So I put that question to a few defense attorneys, and they said, well, alibi witnesses can be tricky, especially if it's just one person, because then it becomes one person's word over another. 
A single witness like that can backfire under cross-examination, or they might take the jury's focus away from the weaknesses in the state's case. So there are conceivable strategic reasons why Christina Gutierrez might not have wanted to put Asia McLean on the stand. But what is inconceivable, they all said, is to not ever contact Asia McLean, to never make the call, never check it out, never find out if her story helps or hurts your case. That makes no sense whatsoever. That is not a strategy. That is a cough up. When I first heard about the long lost Asia letters and the lawyer's mistake, I thought, well, their fight is over, right? They've got an alibi witness who was never heard from. It's such a slam dunk. They're done. Adnan's family hired a new attorney who filed a petition in court based on the Asia affidavit. His argument was that Adnan's trial could have turned out differently if Gutierrez had checked out Asia's story. And so Adnan should get some form of what's called post-conviction relief. The new lawyer figures he'll get Asia to come to the hearing. She'll vouch for her story. By this time, Asia had finished school and moved away. He finds an address on the West Coast, tries calling, sending messages, nothing. Finally, he writes a letter to her and gives it to a private investigator who goes out to Asia's house in hopes of delivering it. Asia's fiancé comes to the door, opens it part way, tells the investigator that she cannot speak to Asia, but that from what he knows of Adnan's case, Adnan is guilty and deserved the punishment he got. Later, the investigator gets a call from the fiancé. We don't have to talk to you. Leave us alone. So Adnan's lawyer calls off the search for Asia, figuring once a witness turns on you like that, it's too risky to keep pushing. And then at Adnan's hearing on the new petition, it comes out that Asia had done the very thing they dreaded. Asia had called one of the prosecutors in Adnan's case, a guy named Kevin Urich, and undermined her own statement. This is from a recording of the hearing. Mr. Urich is testifying on the witness stand. A young lady named Asia called me. And uh, what did she say? She was concerned because she was being asked questions about an affidavit she'd written back at the time of the trial. She told me that she'd only written it because she was getting pressure from the family, and she basically wrote it to please them and get them off her back. It was, it's, I don't know what happened to her and why she would do this. Here's Rabia again. She says it's not true that Asia was bullied into writing that statement 15 years ago. And she can't fathom why Asia would discredit her own statement like that. I don't know why. Though they were, the affidavit was written voluntarily. I mean, I, I'm an attorney. I'm a licensed attorney. I work on Homeland Security. It's like, I have no reason to make something like this up, you know? I didn't even know she existed until... Um, until after the conviction. So what do you think happened? Why, why would they have this sort of violent reaction to helping out Adnan now? I don't know. Uh, it was just really odd. So who knows what would have happened if Asia had shown up? Maybe it wouldn't have made a difference. After all, they had the original letters and the affidavit. That's all that should have mattered. But it didn't look good. It'd be natural for the judge to wonder, why can't the defense produce this Asia person? Why is she making this call to a prosecutor? I mean, anyone would wonder. I wondered. I wondered if maybe she was pressured into writing that affidavit. And I wondered if she was hiding something. Like maybe she'd lied in those 1999 letters. Maybe she didn't really see Adnan at the library that day. And I just wanted to insert herself into something exciting. And maybe now that she was grown up, she wanted nothing to do with any of it. So three, four months after I'd first sat down with Rabia, I'd become fixated on finding Asia. I'm like a bloodhound on this thing, because the whole case seemed to me to be teetering on her memories of that afternoon. I have to know if Adnan really was in the library at 2.36 p.m., because if he was, well, library equals innocent. It's so maddeningly simple, and maybe I can crack it if I can just talk to Asia. I write her a long, gentle, pleading letter and send it off to an address I find online. I'm calling people who know her or who I think might know her. I'm checking the same loop of Facebook, my life, LinkedIn sites over and over, trawling for clues about where she might be or how she might think. If you're wondering why I went so nuts on this story versus some other murder case, the best I can explain is this is the one that came to me. It wasn't halfway across the world or even next door. It came right to my lap. And if I could help get to the bottom of it, shouldn't I try? I start running down all the other information in Asia's 1999 letters. She mentioned there were security cameras inside the library. So my producer and I went to see the very nice manager there, Michelle Hamil. Was there a security system back in 99 that could have been checked at the time? 
Probably. Yes. I'm going to say yes. Okay. And what system was it? I have no idea. <laughs> it was a old system. Yeah. So, but you yeah. think probably video? It was video. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that was part of setup. Every morning you put a videotape in. So okay. that's. And were you guys recycling the videotapes? Yes. Okay. I think it ran for, you know, a week. So you had a Monday tape, a Tuesday tape, a Wednesday tape, and so forth. So. So even if, on the very day that Asia had written her first letter, Adnan's lawyer had run out to find the security tape, it probably would have been non-existent by then. But what about the computer Adnan was supposedly using to check his email? Um, to use the computer, did people have to sign in, like write their name down? They did. And what was the system then? A um, piece of paper and pencil. <laughs> and those, by any chance, weren't logged meticulously and kept for 15 years, were they? No. <laughs> Bummer. All right. We got nothing. Then there was the mystery of Asia's boyfriend, Derek, and his friend, Gerard. All winter and spring, every time I went to Baltimore, I went to Derek's mom's house looking for him and to Gerard's window tinting business. And then finally. All right. So you are Gerard Johnson. Yes, I am. You don't know how excited we are to be talking to you. I've been looking for you for like four months. You didn't do anything, but we were hoping maybe you remembered this moment. On January 13th, 1999, do you ha- have any memory by any miracle that you went to Woodlawn Public Library Branch near Woodlawn High School to pick up Asia McLean with your friend Derek? I have no idea. Asia McLean. Is that a person or a book? <laughs> it's a person. No, no recollection of it. Scratch Gerard. Derek was my last hope. Eventually, I caught him at home. Considering I woke him up, he was exceedingly courteous. He showed me a photo of Asia and him all dressed up. They dated most of senior year. What's up here? This is our senior prom. Yeah. You guys both look really beautiful. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's my, uh, that's that's Asia. Yeah. But Derek couldn't remember that day either. Shocking, I know. He used to pick Asia up from school almost every day back then, either from the library or from the front of the school. And he says he spoke to a lot of her friends just to be polite. And um, it's uh, it's very possible that um, we I could have spoken to the gentleman and her on that day. Um, but it's very hard to remember, you know, 15 years later. But it it's, it sounds, you know, very, uh, it, it sounds like this definitely could have happened. I don't think Asia, Asia's not the type of person that would lie, just to, you That's know, what I'm wondering. Yeah, she's definitely not that type of person, you know, to get involved with a lie, you know, that she's not that type of person. Yeah. So she, uh, it, it, it seems pretty credible to me. One day I get a call on my cell phone from a blocked number. You guessed it, Asia. I wish I could say that my charming, persuasive letter is what prompted Asia to call, but the truth is she never got my letter. I had the wrong address. But she was calling because I'd followed up weeks later with a one-line email, and she was responding to that, a little confused. This is crazy. Um, I mean, I have a couple minutes if you want to chat about it. I recorded our conversation on the cell, which is why the sound quality is so bad. Sorry about that. Asia is now a 33-year-old stay-at-home mother, and she has not spent the last 15 years worrying about Adnan and whether he's guilty. I trust the court systems to do their due diligence, and I, because I, I mean, I was never, I was never questioned, I was never informed of anything pertaining to the case. I don't know why he was convicted. Asia said she was spooked when the private investigator came to her house. I don't know if that's why she didn't testify at the hearing or why she made the call to the prosecutor, but she told me that when she got the knock at the door, quote, that was not cool. Because to her, if Adnan did do it, quote, the last thing you want is a murderer being pissed off at you, knowing where you live. But she had a remarkably clear memory of what happened on January 13th, 1999. She had an internship at the time, and so she got out of school much earlier than everyone else. Derek was supposed to come get her at the library along with Gerard, but they were very late. She remembers seeing Adnan come in after Woodlawn let out for the day. Adnan came in, he sat at the table, and, like, we weren't, like, really close friends or anything like that, but, you know, um, we, 
I, you know, we knew each other and, you know, we just he chatted or whatever. And I can't remember. I think I must have asked him how he was doing or whatever. And he said, fine. And, you know, he told me that him and Hay had broke up. And, and I was like, oh, well, that, that's a bummer. And, and I was like, what happened? And he was like, oh, well, she was seeing this other guy, some, some white dude. And, you know, but he was pretty chill about it. He just, he was just like, you know, well, if, you know, she doesn't want to be with me, then that's fine. I, you know, I just wish the best for her and that kind of attitude and, I'm not sure why Asia's memory of this interaction is so clear all these years later. My best guess is that because she wrote it down at the time, in those letters and then the affidavit, that the details somehow stuck. Do you remember what time you were talking this would have happened in the library? Do you remember what time that conversation would have happened? I don't because I know school let out around 2.15, so it was probably around... Two thirty, because you had said you um, you got out of school earlier than other people. So were you there? Were you at the library before two fifteen? Oh yeah, I had been at the library for a few hours. Oh wow! <laughs> uh, yeah, I was pretty pissed when Derek showed up, and, and and you know, and he asked me who who Adnan was, and you know, you know, Joe's teenager boy language. He's like, you know, who the hell is that? Mm-hmm. And I said, don't even start with me, because, you, you know, you're a few hours late. <laughs> don't worry about who that is, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I remember that day because that was the, the um, day that it snowed. Were there snow days after that? Do you remember? I, I want to say there was, because that was, the, I think that was like the first snow of the year. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't have even remembered if it hadn't been for the snow and the whole, you know, I just remember being so pissed about Derek being late and then getting snowed in at his house and it was the first snow of that year. The snow is important. Hay disappeared on a Wednesday. That night there was a huge ice storm, which is unusual in Maryland. It ended up being a state emergency and school was closed for the rest of the week. Asia started asking me questions about the case. Wasn't there DNA evidence? And what exactly was Jay's part in the whole thing? She wasn't sure Adnan was guilty. She said things I've now heard from so many people since. He seemed like he cared about Hay. He didn't seem angry or upset. I thought there was more proof. Even that day, it did, you know, I didn't walk away thinking like, oh, I just started something. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you want to base his innocence off of his composure at that moment, I would say he's innocent, but... I mean, I'm 32 years old now, and I know that, you know, there's people out there capable of heinous acts that can keep a calm demeanor, you know? Yeah. And I know that there are people who flip out on a moment's notice and do something that, you know, they regret for the rest of their lives. So I, I you know, I don't really... Yeah. Even now, it would be nice if there was some technicality, something that would prove his innocence. Great, you know, one less evil person I've met in my life, <laughs> you know. But but I think I think Asia, like you, might be that technicality. Do you see what I mean? Like you're, if you're saying you saw him on this day at that time, that means the state's timeline for their this whole their whole theory of the case doesn't make any sense. It's a possibility. Because they're saying he was in the car with her at the very time that you're saying, no, I saw him at the library and we were talking. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's exactly the window where they're saying she was murdered. In case you couldn't hear that, it was a sigh. And I completely understand that sigh. It's how I feel a lot of the time. Because I talk to Adnan regularly. And he just doesn't seem like a murderer. A few minutes after I hung up with Asia, Adnan called on schedule. Hey, sir. How are you doing? Um, I'm good. I'm good. Um, I, so I was just talking to Asia McLean. 
Okay. <laughs> you don't sound very excited. I had a... Well, I mean, I, I, I really, you know... Uh, this was not the reaction I expected. I felt like I'd just interviewed an ivory-billed woodpecker. But when I told Adnan what Asia remembered, instead of being excited, Adnan said it was heartbreaking. I mean, on a personal level, I'm happy because, in a sense, it's, you know, that I'm not making this up. And at least, if nothing else, it kind of like, at least someone other than Rabia knows that, you know, this did take place. Anything that can kind of support what I'm saying to be the truth, that I didn't do this, is great. But from a legal perspective, it's like, I wish she would have came to this realization maybe like a year and a half ago, you know what I mean? Because it's kind of like, you know, it, 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 it's, I mean, it's, it's too late. I'm sorry, I mean, I, I definitely appreciate it, you know, and I, I definitely kind of hear the elation in your voice, but now I feel like I punctured your balloon. No, no, I mean, I, I see, I totally, I see, I see what you're saying. I, I hadn't thought about it in that way. When I told Robbie I'd talked to Asia, she immediately burst into tears. Because they were all correct. It was too late. The judge ruled on Adnan's petition a few weeks before I spoke to Asia. Denied. The judge wrote in his opinion that Christina Gutierrez's decision not to use Asia McLean as an alibi witness was strategic. After all, Asia's original letters didn't specify an exact time, and Gutierrez could have reasonably concluded that Asia was offering to lie in order to help Adnan. And finally, he wrote, Asia's letter contradicted Adnan's own alibi. Asia says she saw him at the public library, but Adnan said he was on the school campus the whole afternoon. Maybe the judge didn't understand that Woodlawn Library is basically part of the campus. But anyway. Asia's story, then, is legally worthless. A witness who says she saw you at the exact moment when the state contends you were strangling a young woman in a car is worthless. A few days after I spoke to Asia, she wrote me an email. I've been thinking a lot about Adnan, she wrote. All this time I thought the courts proved it was Adnan that killed her. I thought he was where he deserved to be. Now I'm not so sure. Hay was our friend too, and it sucks feeling like you don't know who really killed your friend. Hay was the sweetest person ever. If he didn't kill Hay, we owe it to him to try to make that clear. And if he did kill her, then we need to put this to rest. I just hope that Anand isn't some sick bastard just trying to manipulate his way out of jail. I wrote back, Believe me, I'm on exactly the same page. Coming up this season on Serial. I think that there are other people involved. Like, maybe, I think maybe he was set up. I think he was set up somehow. Clearly you could tell something was going on that wasn't good. I mean, it was just strange behavior for anybody. Basically threatened me, like, you know what happened to hate. This is what's going to happen to you. That's how I felt that day. What are you thinking right now? You have the same smile I do. I'm literally thinking, like, could like could he have gone crazy? Jay told me he was being blackmailed by Adnan. Because Adnan knew that Jay couldn't go to the police. Like, if this works, and he... I mean, every question we've had for the past eight months, he knows it. Yeah, I mean, who else did it? You know, there's like, running out of suspects. 